congratulations because I see you broke every record in the book with uh, so many millions of people. And that's an honor. We view that as an honor. And then uh, you do want silencing of certain voices. Usually those are voices that have something to say that are constructive, oftentimes <laughs> constructive. Unsurprisingly, the Kamala campaign and their many surrogates are completely freaking out over tonight's Trump Elon Musk interview. And by the way, as they should, I will reiterate here, it was the most viewed live interview in world history by all accounts that I can find, right? You had well over 1 million live concurrent viewers, 2 million in total, and 75 million impressions. You find me a single interview that beat that that was live and not like pre-recorded or something. Yes, it did indeed make history. And there is a real reason the Kamala campaign should be concerned, not just because Trump broke a record with this interview, but because what you saw all across today, especially the moment that Trump came back to Twitter, was a huge energy shift. You know, just 48 hours ago, even a lot of conservatives were on Twitter panicking, saying the Trump campaign has no energy. It's over. We're screwed. We're losing. And then all of a sudden, all it took was one Twitter space and a couple of tweets. The entire vibe has changed. Kamala is back on defense. And I'm fully aware that the Internet is not real life, but I will say neither are polls that show the liberal population of the electorate magically increasing 15 points overnight that's called response bias but you know what whatever we won't even go into that but you saw cope massive cope responses not just from the usual characters like harry sisson that we'll talk about here but even the kamala harris official campaign themselves and even further than that global governments are now demanding the censorship of the trump elon interview it really is that bad for them so we'll get into all of that react to it laugh at it here today folks so if you enjoy the content be sure to hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you are new but of course you know we had to start here by figuring out out what our dear friend Harry Sisson was saying. So here was his response to, again, Trump making world history with this interview, saying, wow, only 2.1 million people tuned into Trump's interview with Elon Musk. That is significantly less than the 70 million Trump claimed was listening. Is anyone surprised that Trump is lying about his audience once again? So first of all, that has to be the funniest cope I've ever seen. Only 2.1 million, yeah, only 2.1 million tuned in live to Trump's interview. But even on top of that, he claims Trump was lying. Well, it's very interesting that the way he cropped this screenshot, because if you scroll down here and look at the impressions, which, yes, Twitter does count as views, you might try to make your own argument that impressions are not views and Twitter shouldn't count it that way, but they do. And as you can see here, already 75 million views. It's not a lie. But but even funnier, I just find 2.1 million. Yeah, most listened to live interview in history. Wow, the, what a cope, what a own you really got on him, Harry. But of course, expectedly, the cope runs much, much deeper. We have Kamala's Wins, which is a great Twitter account if you want to lose your brain cells. Uh, they put out, it's important to remember, the only reason Trump is interviewing on X right now is because he's physically and mentally incapable of holding a rally in a swing state. It's also possible he knows he can't create the crowds that Kamala Harris has inspired. Well, that last part is certainly not true, but even on the front that Trump is incapable of holding a rally in a swing state, well, he's done so many times. Yes, he didn't do one in the past week, but if you look at his schedule for this upcoming week, he has two rallies or two events, at least I should say, planned in swing states, one in North Carolina, one in Pennsylvania. Okay, so it's obviously true that Trump is not quote unquote scared to do a rally in a swing state, but I would care to ask, why is Kamala Harris scared to do a single TV interview? Because that is a stat, that is a fact here that is still true. Kamala Harris has been the presidential nominee for over three weeks now, and still she has yet to do a single sit-down interview, not just with Elon Musk, with anyone, even with CNN, with ABC, with the liberal press that would give her a relatively easy interview, most likely. She refuses to do it. So, you know, it's kind of uh, ironic. Of course, we know these people are dishonest, but it's kind of ironic to say Trump is scared to do a rally, 
when Trump does rallies. But you know what Kamala Harris does not do? Interviews. And a big reason for that, and I said this in the last video, I'll say it again. Kamala Harris knows that the moment a journalist asks her a good faith question about, hey, how come you said all this radical far left stuff in 2020 about every issue? And then in 2024, you're running the exact opposite campaign. That'll expose her to the American people. And that is precisely the reason she is running scared of getting on camera. Now, other people are saying perhaps in more good faith, they're saying, hey, OK, if Elon Musk is willing to do this big Twitter space with Donald Trump, shouldn't he offer that same platform to Kamala Harris? Right. If Trump did the Twitter space, shouldn't Kamala also be allowed to do the Twitter space, which is, of course, true. And by the way, I don't think that Elon Musk would have any opposition to doing a space with Kamala Harris. The only issue is that Kamala Harris is the one who refuses to do any interviews. If she won't sit down with liberal mainstream media, you really think she would sit down with Elon Musk on Twitter? Of course, absolutely not. And so in many ways, I would write that off also as more and more cope. But folks, it gets even worse because it's not just her surrogate saying stuff like this. The official Kamala Harris campaign released this statement, essentially demanding that the Trump interview be censored. OK, so let it be known that this is the public stance of the Kamala Harris campaign. They believe they celebrate in censorship of social media, censorship of political opinions. This is indeed the Soviet state that they want to bring to all of America. And if you don't believe me, read their statement right here. It's says right now, Elon Musk is interviewing Donald Trump live on Twitter. We're not calling it X. It's not enough that Trump that Musk has pledged to donate millions of dollars to help reelect Trump. He's using his purchase platform, one of the largest social media sites in the world, to spread Trump's unhinged and hateful agenda to millions of users. Because how dare he do that? How dare he share his political views? He really should just shut up and be quiet. And I really wonder, Kamala, are you going to institute policies to ensure that? Because that seems to be what you're suggesting here, right? Otherwise, let us remind you why this is a big deal. The richest person in the world is a lackey for Team MAGA. Musk already ruined Twitter by allowing hate speech and disinformation to flood the platform. Now Musk is using his fortune and broad reach to try to control our democracy because, of course, allowing free speech, interviewing your political opponent on his platform, that is a danger to democracy. Kamala clearly implying here that it should all be censored and let that be known, right? This is the America that is coming. They've already tried to harass Elon Musk greatly with the lawfare, with the investigations, all that stuff. And now they're saying it openly, right? They're not exactly hiding it. They're straight up saying, how dare Elon Musk give Donald Trump a platform that really does tell you everything you need to know. But beyond the campaigns, beyond the surrogates, it actually does get worse because we even have global governments going out and calling for the censorship of this interview. And this was before it even released. The EU, the European Union, openly went out. I can't believe this. And they said this. They said this notably means ensuring on one hand that freedom of expression and information, including media freedom and pluralism, are effectively protected. And on the other hand, that all proportionate and effective mitigation resources are in place regarding the amplification of harmful content in connection with relevant events, including live streaming, which, if unaddressed, might increase the risk profile of X and generate detrimental effects on civil discourse and public security. And you see here, they also demand that the interview be in compliance with EU law. So let's call this out for exactly what it is. OK, the EU trying to censor a Trump interview. This is direct foreign interference in our elections, the thing they have, you know, cried about for so long. Oh, my gosh, Russia 2016. We obviously know the liberals, the Democrats, the political establishment, they're not going to care about this. But it is worth noting that is how panicked, that is how desperate they are that Trump got a fair and open platform on a very big platform. Again, right? 75 million impressions. Hey, that means I think clearly, despite whatever the detractors want to say about the technical issues or the DDoS attack or whatever, we did something right tonight because the right people are completely pissed off about this. And that tells you everything you need to know. That said, folks, let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comment section down below. Be sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Follow me on X at the link in the description. And until next time, God bless and peace.